We'd like to welcome each of you today to the house of the Lord. I have been looking forward to this time of sitting under the ministry of our brother Matt and, and trusting in the good spirit to be with us today that uh, each of you might uh, receive a portion of the, the spirit of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to use as a call to worship out of 2 Nephi, the ninth chapter, 135 through 137. And in that day shall he say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings amongst the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee.
Almighty God, we come before thy presence once again to worship you, to give you the honor and glory of your holy name, and request of thee thy presence in abundance in this hour of worship, that Matt will bring us thy spoken word as he gets it from you and the prayers that we offer will have thy blessing and the leadership we have for this service by thy holy servant Leonard that each one of us would be blessed care for us this hour dear Lord that thy presence will be felt and that we will know that thou art God. We pray in the humble and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our loving and kind Heavenly Father, Thou who hast looked down upon Your people and many times and blessed them both uh, temporally and spiritually, unto Thee we give thanks, seeking to praise Thy holy name, and come to Thee in the spirit of gratitude and appreciation for all that Thou hast done. Bless us now as we seek to worship Thee, that Thou would be with our brother, and give him to him those uh, gifts and those thoughts which are appropriate for this time and this hour. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My scripture greeting comes from Genesis chapter 7 starting in verse 39. The Lord said unto Enoch, Behold, these thy brethren, they are the workmanship of mine own hands, and I give un unto them their intelligence in the day that I created them. And in the garden of Eden gave I unto man his agency, and unto thy brethren have I said, and also gave, a com gave commandment, 
that they should love one another, and that they should choose me, their father. Good morning. No, I was supposed to do this two months ago or something like that. I don't know. And it was kind of neat how it was going to turn out. I was, this was supposed to be my first time to preach at a different congregation, but now that I call this congregation home. And then, uh, so to go ahead and start, the reason I shared with the scripture reading that I had was as I was driving to work one day, I was meditating and, and speaking with the Lord, and the thought came into my head that God gave man his agency, and any time God gives something to us, it's a gift from God. And I mean, I know there's several gifts and further on in the chapter and everything, and and everything, and I mean, in the scriptures, Doctrine and Covenants, and the Book of Mormon. But he gave us the right to choose from good and wrong. We have that choice to choose him or choose the world. 
And then I thought even further, okay, well, we're supposed to be good stewards over our time and our monies and our gifts. Well, agency is a gift. Are we good stewards over our agency? Do we choose those choices in our life that bring us closer to Christ? Or do we sometimes let ourselves get in the way? A good friend of mine from Kingsville, Dennis Howard, he'd always say that humanism would, our own humanism would get in our own way sometimes, and that we would sometimes make choices that we later on would regret. I would like to read from section 98. I hope you brought your scriptures. We're going to sharpen our swords a little bit today. And if you don't know what that means, uh, go read Ephesians 6. It's talking about the armor of God and uh, the word of God being the, the sword. This being the word of God. We're, we're going to sharpen the swords today. So section 98. Verse 10f. According to the moral agency, which I have given unto them, that every man be, be, may be accountable for his own sins in the day of judgment. So when we choose from right from wrong, we have that agency that tells us, we have the scriptures that tell us, excuse me, and we have the word of God and we have that spirit within us that lets us know whether it be for God or whether it be for man. And we are all accountable for our own sins. And it is only through Jesus Christ, which bled and died for us upon the cross, that our garments may be once again cleansed, that we may be able, may be able to have the opportunity again to be come back into his presence, to try again, to be that perfect being that he has commanded us to be, as it is said in Matthew, God commanded thee to be perfect, like Jesus unto him. I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing but excuse me. Um, and then from section, section 51, 5b. And whoso is found a faithful, a just, and a wise steward shall enter into the joy of his Lord and shall inherit eternal life. And this being the greatest of all gifts, eternal life is the greatest gift that God has to give us. And you can see that in section 12, verse 3b, where it says, Keep a commandments in all things, endureth to the end. And you will have the greatest gift, eternal life. And it's so important for us to keep the commandments and remember the ordinances of the church. One, uh, several of you know about the uh, Go KC, the, uh, you know, the Kansas City Royals and the Kansas Chiefs, the little symbol that they have that has KC on it. Well, I saw this in Doug Smith's class at reunion this year. And every time I see those symbols now, I, I, re, I remember, go keep the commandments. And that is, a, that is one of our roles as being good stewards over our agency. We either choose to do the commandments of the Lord, or we choose not to do the commandments of the Lord. And it is only through Christ that we may be able to be brought back into his presence. And never think that you've gone so far off the reservation that you never can come back to his presence. Because he is there. It's just like that picture. It might be in the Go Ye and Teach slides here uh, sometime, but it's showing Christ at a door. And there's no handle on the outside of this door. There's only a handle for you to open your life unto Christ. That you may open up your heart and your spirit and your soul. That you may welcome him into your lives. That he may direct you. That he may be able to be your God and that you may be his sheep. He is the master shepherd, and he wants to lead the lost, 
the lost, the lost sheep back into the fold. Wanted to do a little bit of example here real quick. And I was like, we're supposed to be good stewards and we're supposed to follow after Christ. But we also need, as they were saying, the rock of revelation, the, the, the sure foundation of Christ. If our foundation is Christ, we can do all things in which Christ strengthened us. And just as I go over to this wall, not push against it, it's not going anywhere. Because it is on a firm foundation. But this podium, I can move it. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a firm foundation, but I'm just giving you an example. If, if we're on a firm foundation and our faith is unwavering in Christ Jesus, we can kind of accomplish all things. here <laughs> now I brought the Saints Herald here there is a, a couple of things I wanted to read here but I think I'm only going to read one and then I'm going to share some testimonies that uh, I have that have been, I've been a good steward to the Lord, and sometimes I haven't been such a good steward in the Lord as, as in my agency. And uh, some of you have heard this testimony, and others haven't. So I'm going to share it. But after, but I'm going to read this first. This is coming out of Saints Herald's volume 103, 1956. It's on page three. It's called I Am Responsible. And this would be a good guideline to go off, but never, I mean, this, this is a good guideline, but this is what we all should go off of, the sword of Christ. And we should sharpen these daily. And, I mean, we shouldn't let them get rust. We should share these with our family. We should sit down and spend time with the Lord, not just with ourselves with the Lord, but also sit down as families and pray and bring praise, honor, and glory unto our God, our Creator. I am responsible for every hour of the 24 I live each day. How I use them or abuse them concerns not alone me, but others about me. To all these I am responsible for the way I use my time. God gave it to me. It is a gift. And the way I use it will determine my place in the kingdom of men. It belongs to all about me, and I must share it with society. I am responsible for the product of my labor, property, money, the things which I buy and sell, the way I use them, what I do with them. I have no right to waste them. I have only partly created them by industry. The use of the time God has given me. Others have shared in their creation. And they must be used in behalf of all. I have no right to give these products to irresponsible use. I must guard them as a sacred trust. For I am at best a trustee for a short time only. When my trusteeship ends, another begins. Each is for only a short time, but exacting and without escape. I am responsible for the development and use of my mental powers. My mind is the workshop which God has given me, my opportunity. I am responsible for my religious concepts 
and my religious development. God gave me agency, the right to choose, the privilege, but not the right of doing wrong. God breathed into me the breath of life. In him I move and have my being. I have a spirit as well as a body. My body is the means through which I communicate with the physical world about me. I must use that body carefully and wisely. I am responsible for it while I have it in possession of my spirit. I am measurably responsible for those about me. No one can live in a vacuum. I, mu I must live among people. Therefore, each bears some responsibility to those about him. My help is in friends, in books, in the scriptures. I must commune with myself, with my friends, and with God. All this is to help me. To neglect any one of the three is to hurt myself. I am responsible to myself, to my wife, to my children, to all those who have helped me in life. I am a responsible child of God, the Eternal Father. So there's more to it than just choosing right from wrong. We have to be good stewardships over our time, what we choose to do. We have gifts. Like, I, w I wouldn't necessarily need this mic. I could, you guys could probably hear me on the other side of the street. So, <laughs> and uh, several people have the gift of playing beautiful music on the piano or singing with their voices as in the ministry of the music. But I'm going to share my own testimony that I have lived through since I was 14 years old up to now. I mean, it is a ever-growing testimony, and I have a testimony that only I can share, and each and every one of you have a testimony that only you can share that would bring someone else to a closer understanding of Christ, of the work, the work, what, what sorry, of Christ working in your lives. You may not think that he's in your life right now, just but remember the footprints in the sand. When you thought you were walking alone, you weren't walking alone. It was Christ that was carrying you through the difficult times. My testimony starts when I was 14 years old, and my mom and Luana Coos decided that I needed to go to a church reunion, and I didn't want to go to church reunion. I wanted to stay home and be with my friends and everything. Well, I, the choice was taken away from me, and I got to go to a church reunion. So I went to church reunion, and the first two days I was miserable, didn't like it. I was like, I can't wait for this week to be over. But then I met my wife, Melissa, and uh, things turned around for me, and uh, what was first become friends, and her dad was, oh, ain't that cute, and that's not ever going to last. <laughs> but uh, I've known Melissa for 21 years. I asked her to marry me when I was 17. We got married when I was 18. And, uh, oh, wow. Well, okay, there was one testimony in there before we got married. I had gotten a blood clot in my leg when I was 17 years old, and I got it from my hip to my ankle. And it had been misdiagnosed as a knee injury by an emergency doctor. And I was given some medicine, and my mom's like, don't take the medicine. It, and, I mean, it, you're misdiagnosed. I'm for almost, for sure, almost for sure that it is a blood clot. So we went to my family doctor the next day and said, well, I just over the phone, I think it's a blood clot, but let's do a sonogram, and we'll, we'll know for sure. So we went next day, and uh, yes, for sure, it was a blood clot from my hip to my ankle when I was only 17 years old. And uh, they said that if I would have taken that medicine that the doctor at the ER had, had given me, that that would have broken the blood clot up, went up from my heart or brain, 
giving me a stroke or possibly killed me. So thank goodness for mom, hold, keeping that hold off, and thank goodness for the Lord that he's protect me in that time that I may be able to stand here before you today. But continuing on, um, I've had problems with blood clots several years, but we're not going to get into that. We'll, we'll take care of that later. <laughs> and uh, so me and Melissa got married when I was 18. And uh, just right before my 21st birthday, I got called to the office of deacon. And uh, I prayed a lot about it, and I felt that it was right. And I had been given a poem that some of you have heard. And I don't, I don't have it with me, or I probably would read it. But um, don't worry about it if you have it, Melissa. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> if you want, it's, it's somewhere online under some kind of, I think it's poetry.com. Just look up God's hands. And it has a, a totally different meaning to me now than it did back then because of things that have happened in my life and in the life of me and Melissa. So shortly after I accepted the call, oh yeah, I forgot one thing. When we were right, when the day we got married, Melissa came to me and she said that a lady, old lady, had come to her and said, there is one mountain that you guys will have to cross and then everything will be okay. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird to say on a wedding day. You remember that, Melissa? Yep. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't think of nothing of it. I, I was like, well, I'm not going to let somebody be negative on my wedding day. But uh, boy, was she right. <laughs> so um, shortly after I got ordained to, to, to deacon, and I was on fire. I was ready to serve the Lord, and, and I was youth leader at Kingsville. And I was just ready to do whatever the Lord wanted me to do. I, was, I had been blessed so many times. And then just as quickly as I had started to serve the Lord, it was just like the adversary came out of nowhere. And, and I, I had a, a tremendous trial that I had to work through. And um, the trial was we were starting to try to have a family. And uh, well, as you notice, we don't have, a, there's no little kids or, well, I guess they would be 17 years old now and stuff, so... <laughs> So we continued to try to have a family for a while, and then we're like, hmm, well, something's, something's weird. My brother's having kids and, and cousins and everything, but we weren't able to have kids. So I went to the hospital, and they did a cerebral test, and I come to find out that I have this thing called Klinefelter syndrome, which I'm sure a majority of you have never heard of that before. But what it is is I have an extra... X chromosome? Yeah, I have an extra X chromosome. You all have 46 chromosomes that make up your DNA structure. I have 47. I have an extra uh, female chromosome in my body. So I don't produce testosterone or anything like that. So, <laughs> And it also makes me not able to start a family. And I'll skip the uh, tearful stuff because uh, usually after that I... <laughs> I just say we couldn't start a family, and we had five names picked out. We wanted to have a large family and everything. We had three boys' names and two girls' names, and we were working on the third girl's name, but we never got to it. And this is where the agency comes in. I could choose to go ahead and put my trust in the Lord and follow him and believe one day that we would have a family, but I did the opposite. It When I found out that I couldn't have children, I... Something inside me broke. And it took me 10 years to turn what had been broke around. I would come, I mean, when, when I was scheduled for things at church, I would come, but that's about the only time I would come. I wouldn't come for early morning worship. I wouldn't go for Wednesday night. I just basically shut down. I had built, a, and eventually I had built up a wall. And I got to the point, and I almost fooled myself, that I got over it. But I didn't. I was just fooling myself. <laughs> and not ever once did I turn to the Lord and say, help me with this cross. I tried to bear the pain and the loss myself. And I did that for 10 years. And then one day, 
I start. I decided. Well, maybe is maybe I need to turn things around and stuff. Even my dad was worried about me. He he said I was like yeah, I had bought a Mustang. I was getting be kind of a um, little irresponsible there for a while. <laughs> and he had asked me how things were going, and I was like, Nah, not very good. No, I don't even know if I want to go to church anymore. I mean, it was a real big hit to me that we weren't able to start a family, and it just crushed something inside and. I knew I should have asked the Lord to help me mend that, the part of me that was broken. And I finally did. I'm not the same man that I was 10 years ago, maybe not even 5 years ago. And I started coming back around 2010, 2011, then I came, went to the 2013 reunion and stuff, and that's when my fire started to be lit again. And when I came back from reunion, I was a new man, a new creature. I was once again buried in baptism with Christ to once again be a new creature. And he gave me that opportunity, even though I had went so many years just kind of doing my own thing. He was there waiting at the door, waiting for me to open it. So he would, so it would allow him to be back into my life, into my heart, and into those things that he would have me do for him in his work and, and bringing forth the cause of Zion and his kingdom. So I bear that pain and that built up a wall. And then God tore that wall down and then I asked him to bear that pain with me. And that's why I can stand here this day and preach to you and talk to you and tell you about things. The good news of the gospel. The good things that the Lord will do in your life. If you will just let him, don't let that door shut. Open it up. Open up your heart. And he will bless you. And he has blessed me, and he has blessed my wife. I've had uh, problems with my leg uh, from all the blood clot damage in my legs. And I had a pressure ulcer, which is basically just a sore in the side of my calf on this leg, my right leg. And it's been there, and it's been open for six plus months, about the same size. It burns, and I mean, it uh, it drains, and it's painful. And I went to a reunion this year, and I did a lot of praying, and um, um, spending time with the saints, and just feeling that wonderful spirit that sometimes I, I, I had missed in those last ten years when I thought I could do it myself, when I thought I could take care of myself. But I can't take care of myself, and neither of you can either. God created us, and he gave us the opportunity to come back into his presence through his son, Jesus Christ. He gave his only begotten son that you and I may be saved and have eternal life to be with him in the kingdom of God. When the kingdom of God once again comes upon this, this earth, in the, as we worked to bring forth the cause of Zion, we need to be of one heart. And of one mind. It's getting off track there a little bit, but I think the Spirit was wanting me to... <laughs> huh? That's right on track. That's right on track. <laughs> so just don't close that door. Don't think you can do it yourself. No one person should have to go through life thinking they're alone. That they have no one looking after them. Because God is with you every step of the way. And it is our own hearts and our own minds that trick ourselves into believing that we are on our own. And that God doesn't care about us. And that's a lie that you're, you're lying to yourself. God cares about each and every one of you in this room. He loves you. He created you. He gave your first breath of life. And there isn't anything he wouldn't do for you if you would just ask. Keep his commandments. Put faith unwavering in him. Give your all to him. Let him take over the reins in your life. Let him take over the hardships and the burdens. There's not one thing in this life that he gives us that we cannot ha handle. God give me strength in which all things are possible. God give me strength in my trials, my tribulations, 
through the storms and the mountains and the valleys, everything. Give it over to give it over to Christ, and He will strengthen you. Rejoice in your tribulations, for it is that our tribulations and our trials that try our faith to bring us closer to God. Would like to I read one last scripture from Moroni? Or wait a minute. Yeah, Moroni. Chapter 10. It's really easy to find. I think it's like the last page of the Book of Mormon. And of course, I'm going to flip through the entire index to get to it. Starting with verse 29. Yay! Come unto Christ and be perfected in him. And deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then, in his grace, then is his grace sufficient for you that by his grace ye may be perfect in Christ. And if by gr the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ, ye can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if ye by the grace of God are perfect in Christ, and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ by the grace of God, through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is the covenant of the Father, unto the remission of our, your sins, that you become holy without spot. Amen.
Our dear Heavenly Father, our Creator, our Judge, and our Rewarder, thank you, Father, for the message that my brother has brought forth. And Father, as a reminder of the things that we need to be aware of daily, not only daily, but hourly. I pray, Father, that we may take this with us, that we may practice what my brother has so stated. Be with us, Father. Keep us safe until we meet again. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.